How Do You Know What Time It Is? by Robert E. Wells. For my parents-in-law, Jess and Levon Dunning, who have invested much of their time promoting peace and justice. Time is a mystery. You can't see it. You can't hear it. You can't catch it in a net and put it in a jar. But you know time is real because you can sense it passing by. In a way, time is like the wind. You can't see the wind, but you can see what happens when it blows. Kites fly in the air, clouds move across the sky, and boats sail over the water. And you can see what happens when time passes. Blossoms turn into apples, cubs grow up to be bears, and caterpillars become butterflies. But time is more mysterious than the wind. It's so mysterious that even the greatest thinkers and scientists can't say exactly what it is. Even so, it's a mystery we can measure. Not with a measuring tape, of course. That's what you'd use to measure an alligator. A clock can measure time, but once there were no clocks. Long, long ago, people measured time with the sun. By observing the sun's position as it moved across the sky, early people could tell how much time they had to gather food or firewood before darkness returned. Our ancestors didn't know why the sun kept appearing and disappearing. They didn't understand, as we do today, that Earth is round and turns like a top, so that the world is light where it faces the sun and dark where it faces away. After a while, people invented simple time measuring devices. Egyptians made shadow stick clocks. As the sun moved across the sky, the stick's shadow moved around stone markers. At night, they used water clocks. Water dripped from one pot to another pot with marks inside to measure time. Drip, 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 drip. Egyptians were among the first to divide time into hours. That was many thousands of years ago. In Europe, somewhat more recently, Sundials measured hours more accurately than shadow sticks. And sun sand glasses measured time with falling sand. By the 1300s, mechanical clock measured time with gears and weights. There's a weight. Falling weight turns clock gears. Escapement device rocks back and forth, allowing gear to move one tooth at a time. Early clocks only had hour hands. They could not measure minutes accurately. Later, pendulums were added. Each swing of the pendulum allows gears to move one tooth at a time. When a pendulum swings back and forth, its regular rhythm controls the clock's speed almost perfectly. With pendulums, clocks can measure minutes and even seconds. Today, quartz crystals make even small timepieces more accurate than the best pendulum clocks. Atomic clocks now keep Earth's official time. While the sun helped early people measure a day, the moon's changing shape helped them keep track of months. In Egypt, the regular flooding of the Nile River was very important because the water brought new soil to the fields. Egyptians began to keep track of the time between new moons to help them predict when the next flood would come. New moon, full moon, new moon, one month. That's where the word month comes from, moon. Long ago, people didn't know why the moon changed shape. Today, we know why. As the moon orbits, 
or travels around Earth, it's always half lit by our sun, as shown. But from Earth, we see that light from different angles, causing the different shapes. Look here, we only see the shadow. When we look here, we see it all lit up. It takes about 29 and a half days for the moon to change through all its shapes as it orbits once around the Earth. We call that the moon cycle. The Egyptians saw that about 12 moon cycles passed between each flood. They made lunar calendars, dividing 12 moon cycles into three seasons, flooding, planting, and harvest. But they soon discovered they had to add extra days to the calendars because 12 moon cycles are 11 days shorter than the cycle of the seasons, or one year. Egyptians didn't know why the moon cycles didn't match the seasons. Today, we know that our seasons are not measured by the moon, but by Earth's orbit of the sun. As Earth travels around the sun, it revolves on an imaginary line called the axis. Earth's axis is tipped at an angle. This causes the part of Earth that's tipped toward the sun to be warmer, and the part that's tipped away to be cooler. The changing amount of sunlight causes the changes in our seasons. It takes about 365 and one quarter days for Earth to orbit the sun. We call that a solar year. Let's see, right now here's North America on the northern part of the Earth and it's facing away, so that's winter, which when I'm recording this, we've moved past and we're here in spring, when the sun's about equally on north and south of the Earth. Oh, sorry, spring. And then, oh, here would be summer where the part, the northern part of the Earth with North America would be facing towards the sun, getting more heat and light. Later, the Egyptians began to use a solar calendar. They knew that the star Sirius always made its first appearance in the morning sky just before the floods. So they chose that day to begin the year, to begin each year. Since Sirius is in this position only once during Earth's orbit, the new calendar measured the year at 365 days, just one quarter of a day short. During the rule of Julius Caesar, the Romans began using the Egyptian solar calendar. In 46 BCE, Caesar added a leap, Caesar added a leap year day to February, every fourth year to account for the extra one quarter day. This ancient Roman calendar, with only minor adjustments and changes over the years, is the one most of us, most of the world, uses now. It's off by only 26 seconds each year. Today, our calendar is almost perfect, and with atomic clocks, we can know the exact time anywhere on Earth. But because it's daytime on one side of the Earth, while it's nighttime on the other, daytime, nighttime, it would be confusing if clocks around the world showed the same time. Some people would be eating lunch in the dark. To solve that problem, our world has been divided into 24 time zones, one hour apart and centered on meridian lines. Which are these lines here. With time zones, it's not the same time for everyone. So you see here, it's See, here's where I am in New York. It's 1 p.m. there, but then it's 6 p.m. in England and 7 p.m. Um, this would be right around Equatorial Guinea and uh, let's see what else. Looks like maybe Norway. 10 p.m in Iran, all at the same time, different hours. Huh. Time zones usually follow the meridian lines, but sometimes zigzag around cities or countries to avoid dividing them. 
If you straddle the line between uh, dividing two zones, it could be 9 a.m. for your right foot and 10 a.m. for your left foot. And if you're in Los Angeles at 9 p.m., you'd better not call a friend in New York for a chat. It's midnight there. Have you ever dreamed of being a time traveler? Surprise, you already are. The path of time. The past. No U-turn. Gone but not forgotten. Everyone on Earth is traveling on the path of time. The past is right behind us, and the future just ahead. You are here now. The present. The future. This way. May it be bright. Now is always. Now is always exactly where we are. So far, no one has figured out a way to go backward in time, except in the movies and the books. But if you could, what would you like to see? What would you like to see? Instamatic time travel service. These past events now available for viewing. First men on the moon, first airplane flight, flea collar invented, first Olympic games, age of dinosaurs. Ooh. Hmm, I might want you to go to the uh, age of dinosaurs, but... I'd be a little nervous. Most people don't think about time very often, but it's so important we wouldn't, couldn't do anything without it. Without time, nothing could move, not even a fraction of an inch. You couldn't even blink your eyes. No matter how fast you blinked, it would take a tiny bit of time. See how fast you can blink your eyes. <laughs> without time passing by, Without time passing by, you couldn't play a computer game or eat a bowl of ice cream or paint a picture or ski down a slope. How could you? All those things take time. Aren't you glad we have time? Time marches on. A bit more information about all of that history. But that was... How Do You Know What Time It Is by Robert E. Wells. And this is EDU Kids Space. Subscribe for more stories, books, and lessons. Hit the bell button so you're notified when I put out new books. And check out the description to purchase this book, support the authors and the channel. And if you want this to support this channel even more, check out my Patreon page, which should be in the video description and on the channel page. Um, and that's just a way <clears throat> for people to just donate to the cause. I'm trying to put out free educational resources. So I hope that you uh, can use them and enjoy them and learn from them. <laughs>